So you want to create selections in Adobe Photoshop, but what you don't want is to be limited by only the marquee tool shapes, which are all quite simple. Instead, what you want to be able to do is actually customize those selections so you can make whatever you want. And by the end of this video, what we're going to do is learn the lasso tool, which allows you to do this. Cool, so have Adobe Photoshop open. If you're unfamiliar with what selections are in Adobe Photoshop, then this will be the right video for you. We will also cover that in this video. But if you also want to learn how to use the marquee tools, which I were referring to at the beginning of this video, then do check out the video in the description below because that will allow you to catch up to everything we need to know by this stage. But anyway, like I said, what we're going to do is learn how we can actually use the lasso tool in Photoshop. So there's two types of lasso tools that we're going to learn in this video. The first one is the lasso tool and the second one is the polygonal lasso tool. So as you can see, the tools are on the left hand toolbar here. And in order to bring up the options, all you have to do is hold on whichever option is currently selected. So you'll probably have the lasso tool selected if you've never used this tool before. We will cover what happens in the magnetic lasso tool in a separate video, but for now, just to keep it simple, we're going to only cover the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool. So let's start with the lasso tool itself. So just releasing on that option, as you can see, our cursor changes to bring up the lasso tool. So essentially what the lasso tool allows us to do is to draw a selection using our mouse. So for example, if I wanted to cut away part of this square, which is in the middle of my canvas, then all we have to do in order to create a selection is just to start drawing anywhere on our screen. As you can see, it can be any shape that you want. I'm just drawing something completely random. And just by releasing your left mouse button at any point, it's going to create that selection. And now, as you can see, we've got a selection. So when we're actually hovering over the selection itself with our cursor, we get this white arrow. We can move around our selection if we want to be able to change the position of it. And of course, we can actually subtract away from our square now just by pressing backspace on our keyboard. And then in order to get rid of the selection, we can press Command and D or Control and D for Windows. So as you can see, the lasso tool is a great way just to be able to create any random shape that you want. You can literally draw whatever you want, and it's always going to snap and complete the selection when you let go. And then press Backspace or create a mask at the bottom here. And as you can see, it will mask our square to that shape. So I'm just going to quickly undo that. Now the other option that we had was the polygonal lasso tool. So if we quickly go back up to the toolbar to where we had that menu option and quickly go down to the polygonal lasso tool, as you can see, the shortcut for all of these is the letter L on your keyboard and that's both for Windows and Mac. And depending on which of the three you had previously selected will be the one that it automatically takes you to. So we're just releasing on the polygonal lasso tool. As you can see, our cursor changes. And the main difference between the polygonal lasso tool and the lasso tool itself is that the lasso tool allows you to draw freely just using wherever your cursor lands. But this actually uses points and connects lines to those points. So for example, if I press once using my left mouse key here, as you can see, it will create a point from which a line is now drawn. Then depending on wherever my cursor is and I left mouse click next time, it will create another point and it will draw a line between those two. And just continuing like that, as you can see, I can draw out any random shape. For example, I could sort of do a letter E like that. And in order to actually connect up the last line to the original spot, all we have to do is hover over that point. As you can see, a small circle appears in the bottom right of the cursor. And just by pressing once, as you can see, that will actually confirm our selection. So once again, we can just delete backspace on our keyboard in order to cut that out for square or you can do whatever you want to do with that selection. So I'm just gonna quickly undo that. Now one third the thing to be aware of, which is both applicable to the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool, if I quickly make a selection, so for example, if you want it to be a straight line, by the way, all you have to hold in is shift on your keyboard, and that will actually create a straight line according to the Y or X axis. So as you can see like that, or going across on the X axis. It will also go in 45 degree angles, so like that. As you can see, it will just snap to those. So for example, if I just create a random selection like this, and then go to the original point and once again, complete the selection, what we can do is if we're unhappy with our selection, perhaps we want to make a small amend to one of these sections. What we can do is use these buttons on the top left hand corner of our screen. So as you can see, the one that's currently selected is just a white square. And this basically means that you can draw a selection. And when you're hovering over the selection, you can actually move it around. Now the second option is add to selection. And just by selecting that option, what you'll now notice is the cursor has once again changed. Instead of that small circle that appears when we actually connect up all of the dots, as you can see, there's now a small plus symbol. And this basically means that we can add to our current selection. 
Now the selection that we draw doesn't actually have to be connected in any way to the selection that we've already made. So for example, I can create a new selection here and now it all forms part of the same selection. Or I can actually overlap them. So for example, I could start here and just complete a small shape there, which will now automatically add to that original selection that we had. So this is just an easy way to be able to actually customize our selections further and make any amends to our selection in case we actually went wrong. Now the opposite one to that is obviously to be able to subtract from our selection. And as you might have guessed, it's obviously the next option along where we have this small white square and a small black square. And as you can see, our cursors also change. So instead of the plus, we now have a minor symbol. Now with this one, we will have to make sure we actually subtract from part of the selection we've already made. We can't go and make a small selection here because there's nothing to subtract because that area is not already selected. So for example, like you can see, it's made no difference. But if we actually hover over the selection itself, so for example, let's say I wanted to cut everything on the right here away and just complete our selection, just like we had with the initial one. It's now cut all of that selection out and we've only remaining with this part. We could even just cut out a small part in the middle of our selection. So once again, it doesn't have to involve any of the outside part. We can also cut away from the inside. And now the final option, if I just quickly deselect this and make a slightly larger selection, as you can see, when we've deselected, it will automatically go back to the first option, even though we've got the third option selected. And this is just so we can create an initial selection. So for example, if I create a sort of square here, as you can see, it's now going to go back to that third option because that's the one we have selected. So the last option that we had is the intersect selection. What this allows us to do is when I create a selection, it's slightly hard to explain, so I'll try and draw it first. If I complete the selection here, what it's going to do is take away the middle part where the two selections overlap. So in this case, that would be this box here. So for example, if I complete the selection, as you can see, we're only left with that because that's where our selections intersected. If I were to make a box like this, as you might have guessed, the bit that's being removed is this middle bit here because that's where these two selections overlap. So for example, as you can see, it's now cut away those two parts and it's also not included those two extra boxes that we had on top and bottom. Now the last option you should also be aware of is that the lasso tools also include the feather option. I'm gonna make a video on how feather works in the future, so do stay tuned if you want to learn how that works. But until then, those were the basics of how you can use lasso tools in Adobe Photoshop. If you're interested in learning how you can create complex patterns from simple shapes in Adobe Photoshop, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and also do subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.